Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you may, may have noticed, anyone that's been following the build, uh, we didn't post a video up last week. Uh, and the week before that, I basically took off because I was getting burned out on the whole project. Um, it happens, it's a real thing. So if you need a break, just take a break. So that's what I had to do. So then we came in the following week and started doing the wiring and other things in the engine bay and I went home and immediately deleted it by accident <laughs> so so we didn't have any footage to put up last week but we did get a lot done and I've got a lot done this week um, as you can see we got the the uh, rear brakes plumbed uh, I put the rear anti-sway bar on I still need to take the links off and paint those but uh all the brakes are on the car uh, Wendy had, uh, oops, Wendy had painted up the disc hats, and these, these are Mustang rotors, the axle shafts are, um, um, Mosier, they're, uh, the, the axle shafts are Mosier axles, but they're for a Ranger application, so the hub is not the same diameter as the hub on the axle shaft, so I had to buy some little, uh, hub centric range to keep the discs from just you know wobbling all around so I got those installed um, fuel pump is most of the way installed I just have it held in with some self tappers right now but I am going to go back and drill and put actual bolts in the holes to keep it from vibrating loose uh, I have ordered the new parking brake cables they should be in tomorrow so we'll have that done and um, on the last Mustang video that I put up uh, one of my one of my viewers uh, Wolfthorn Hawkridge he's been a huge supporter of the channel um, so I appreciate you buddy thank you um, and I think we we're supposed to see him at Power Tour so that'd be good I think he oh, wants cool. to check stuff out so anyway he uh he, so he said that I can't wait to see how you're going to run the exhaust and I was like well I've got that figured out because I had tried it you know the the u-bend over the uh, passenger side of the axle but then I started thinking I was like well wait a minute here now I might have some stuff in the way on the driver's side so I came over here and checked it out and sure enough I did so come on over here and let's check this out um, I had originally had oh let me see if I can find it oh this I'm using a bunch of brake hoses that I have had laying on the shelf forever from previous project cars. And I had had this one mounted right here and I was like, oh great, that's going to that's gonna clear everything. It's kind of going to clear the upper control arm. And of course it was mounted down here, but you know. Anyway, but I, I had it welded to that stud and the fuel pump was over probably a good two or three inches. And then I realized that I had no clearance for the exhaust so i really appreciate you saying that because uh right now while we're still in the mock-up phase i was able to fix it so thank you all right uh moving forward here we've got collector extensions you may have already seen these in previous episodes but i never really said anything about them we had to cut the we had to cut the um collector flanges off because they were hitting the transmission so I got these cone type reducers they're made by Flowmaster um, anyway I got some of these nice flat clamps uh, these band style clamps for the for the uh, collector so there's no so that it kind of gives us all the clearance we can get as far as a, you know under the ground because these headers do hang kind of low but I also went ahead and welded in an O2 sensor bung because we are going to at least in the beginning we're going to run uh, AFR gauge just to make sure everything's okay with the engine. We are going to have to what does wrap an air fuel ratio gauge. Hmm. Um, we uh, are going to wrap the headers right here next to the transmission pan on both sides. Just I mean, just from basically where the collector starts to where this tube ends, pretty much. Um, we live in the south. And anybody that lives in the south knows it gets really hot down here. 
so I'm just trying to give the transmission I'm trying to give everything if you if you'll notice all throughout this this build you're gonna see I use the uh, I use heat wrap on just about everything I can just to prevent any problems down the road and I know people will probably say that that the header wrap will accelerate rust on on headers and things like that which I mean these are ceramic coated so I'm not too worried about that this is just raw steel um, it may be galvanized but I, but I doubt it but uh it, we're, we're not going to be driving the car that much Wendy's going to be driving it and I can almost guarantee you that we're probably never going to be driving the car in the rain unless we get caught out in the rain somewhere or maybe on power tour or whatever but I'm sure that rainy days the car will stay in the garage and our daily drivers will be driven for that so I'm not too worried about it it's not like we're driving it you know every single day um, it should last years and years so I think we'll be okay with that uh, moving all right and this is I still need to reroute this uh, TV cable because I don't like the way it's humped up over this transmission cross band where it kind of looks like kind of looks like it puts it in a little bit of a bind here so I'm going to loop it around again. Like I said, you, you're going to see me using this heat heat wrap quite often through this build. And moving forward, uh, we've got the front calipers on, pads on, brake hoses on. These hoses actually came from a leftover Grand Cherokee project, of all things. I just never ran them. And they, they, they look like they'll work. So um, we just decided to employ those since we've already got them. We probably saved, I don't know, probably a hundred bucks throughout the system just by using these hoses that I had sitting on the shelf that weren't being used for anything. So I bought some of that nickel copper uh, hard line brake tubing and routed that around across the K member. And again, you'll see heat wrap because it comes kind of close to this header so I didn't want the brakes boiling or anything like that um, which I doubt but I mean I, I just get kind of paranoid when it's not my car it's my wife's car and I want to make sure that I just want to make sure there's no problems at all with it um, we went to the Harley Davidson dealership the other day and ordered some clutch cable retaining clips because it just so happens that the tubing used in this kit is the same size as the frame rails on the down tubes of Harley Davidson motorcycles, the uh, big twins anyway. So the cable clip for the clutches should work for this to hold this brake line up nice and tight against this without it vibrating and carrying on. And, and it'll look better than zip ties like you see over here. Um, it'll just make it look neater. Yeah, it'll make it look neater. It just make it look more purposeful, you know, like you know, somebody meant to do that. Um, again, over here, you'll see where the two two brake lines converge to go up to the master cylinder. I've also got heat wrap on that because the headers again are right here. And again, the caliper caliper and pads and everything are on over here. Same thing with this. This is the opposite side, Grand Cherokee brake hose and. Spacers. Okay. Now, this was something that I did not foresee happening. Um, as I've said before, I used 94, 95 specific spindles for this kit, and it looks like I just, I mean, even though I didn't pay a huge amount for these because I got them from a junkyard and they just basically charged the same price for everything, but these particular spindles, Fox body guys love them because they're basically the same geometry as a Fox uh, spindle, but it's got five lug hubs and all that. So they love those, they pay big money for them, but it, it seems to me like I should have just went ahead and just got a 96 up spindle because the tie rod end is in a better location for uh, in relation to the lower A arm for bump steer. And when I put our wheels on our little skinny wheels for the front, let me move this out of the way. When I put our skinny wheels on the front, 
I didn't even think nothing about it, but as soon as I tried to bolt the wheel down, it hit the brakes. Scrubbed the paint right off of them. And I was like, well, doggone it. So we're gonna have to touch that up. Wendy wanted to touch this part up right here anyway, so we can touch that up while it's in there. So I had to order, uh, I got bare brakes, wheel spacers, because they are a hub-centric design. I didn't want them, you know, flopping all around and carrying on several different lug patterns on here. So then that required me to get longer wheel studs, which I'm sure Wendy's gonna hate. But um, it is what it is. It was it was an unexpected thing. I, I, I never expected it to, I never expected the wheels not to clear the brakes. So, you know, hey, my fault. But anyway, let's move on over here. Okay, and we got the transmission cooler line hoses hooked up from the transmission to the transmission cooler that's inside the radiator. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a hose uh, on one of the Mustang forums, I believe, that uh, that had a part number. Uh, I, I, if anybody's interested in a part number for this radiator hose for a five liter reverse rotation water pump to the 65 Mustang, just uh, to the 65 Mustang radiator, let me say that. Uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll post up the number. Um, we got the oil changed. Uh, we are going to hook up the power steering lines today. Um, we went last night to O'Reilly and uh, the little fellow was having some trouble up there and I think that he thought that he ordered the, the pressure line for us and it somehow inadvertently didn't get ordered. So when I went up there today, they, they apologized and said, that, well, we'll just get it, you know, today so anyway it, anyway that's not, it's not a huge deal not a big deal we got other things to do um got my ground hooked up to the body or to the frame rail um that goes from the engine which i got the engine i got grounds everywhere because i mean i believe in having good ground system so let's let the car down and we'll go over some of the things that we've done in the engine bay all right we bought a complete replacement underhood wiring harness from uh, I think MPD maybe um, anyway it's just a reproduction of the factory stuff which I mean we don't really have anything fancy under here which got you know carburetor coil starter relay stuff like that um, I did get a 3G alternator and I bought a 3G alternator regulator conversion kit which is down there. Um, basically, it just makes everything all nice and neat with the wiring. I uh, do have the distributor dropped in. It's not timed. I just put it in there for, you know, to look pretty for right now and cover that hole up. I've got the fuel pressure regulator mounted to the firewall. I am really not happy at all with that elbow where the gauge is, but I mean, if it works okay fine you know maybe i can do something with it later on i do have a fuel filter up here in the engine bay i need to also find some way to mount this to keep it out of the way of the throttle pedal uh, the throttle linkage anyway let me say that um again use of i use the uh the heat sleeve down here to keep the getting the fuel overheated well i mean since we've got an electric fuel pump which you saw earlier so um vapor lock is not as much of an issue but it's still i mean it, it, it is a returnless style system so heat soak the, the potential for problems with heat soak is is there but um, i'm trying to do like i said i'm trying to do everything to mitigate the problems that i can that i can think of ahead of time got air filter assembly um i wound up ordering i like i've always liked this style of air cleaner um just always thought that it looked neat for whatever reason so i ordered a lower to match and come to find out it winds up hitting the uh, throttle rod and it hits this return spring uh bracket which i could machine that down that's not a huge deal but we can't have it hitting the uh throttle rod at all we don't want it to get hung up so i've ordered like a little half inch spacer I mean, just to just to lift it up just a little bit so we've got clearance for everything. So that should be in 
tomorrow I believe anyway we got a lot of stuff coming in um, brake lines are run up here and I honestly tried my best to make the lines look nice and neat in the beginning and once I got frustrated a couple of times I just said you know what this stuff's nice and easy and malleable I can make it look however I want but in the interest of just getting things done I just created this monstrosity but it works it should work because we're going to be bleeding the brakes today um, so we installed Locar dipstick tube for the oil pan and I ordered one for a 302 um, block entry and not because the, uh, the original Mustangs I believe had the dipstick tube on the timing cover I think the 50 has the dipstick tube coming out of the side of the block so I uh, so when I went to put it in we were having all sorts of issues and this is the part that goes into the that goes into the block it's got two o-rings right here but when I started putting putting it into the block it would get so far and the bottom the bottom of the dipstick tube has a setup similar as this kind of like a n line fittings that was hitting the engine block and I was like well what's going on here so it took me forever to try and get all this stuff back out and you can see I pretty much just destroyed that piece so um, we made one that was about two inches longer so it basically got everything to clear but now I need to cut this down I know that looks a whole lot more than two inches but luckily all this stuff is adjustable I can cut this down and then I can when I pull this out I can take this set screw out and I can shorten this cable right here so I can make everything work like it should it's just going to take a little bit of doing um, but anyway that was just a that was a headache that really didn't need to be um, mounted my coil uh, got the whole engine bay basically wired up as neatly as I could I still need to uh, do the this car didn't come from the factory with uh, with reverse lights but one of these is reverse lights one of them is uh, the neutral safety switch and this is the same stuff coming off of the AOD transmission I just need to figure out what's what and uh, I'll get that wired up but for right now when we spin the motor over I just been jumping that I just been jumping that wire over so are we gonna put reverse lights we can but we're probably not gonna do them right now um, um, now I've found a couple more issues with this AJE kit if you can see when I set the air cleaner on the engine it's it's screwed down to the top of the carburetor so it's not it's not you know it's not laying over to one side or anything like that for effect this is just exactly how it sits you can see that the engine sits higher on the driver's side than it does the passenger side and that I don't know why I don't know why it's like that it shouldn't be that way it should be sitting level so we loosen the motor mounts up and I thought okay well if I slide the motor over that way maybe it'll you know maybe it'll but it just it just slides straight so um, I'm gonna have to modify the motor mount to get this side to set down um, that really bothers me and another thing that bothers me is that when I put the steering rack in I kept noticing that when I would tighten one side up and then I would go to tighten the other side it kind of moved everything and then I put a I put a protractor on the heads of the bolts and <laughs> the steering rack mounting bolts are the let me get this right the tubes that are welded into the K member are welded in four degrees different from one another so you've got one bolt like this and one bolt like this and that's why whenever I was tightening it up it was twisting everything around but they're in rubber bushings so I don't really think it's gonna matter 
but that just speaks to the quality of this kit along with why the motor is sitting up high on one side uh, I, I don't understand what's going on here um, that this this part really bothers me but I mean uh, I've got enough on my plate right now that we're we're gonna run with it for right now and after power tour we're probably gonna come back and fix it I'll just take the motor mount off of this side and modify it a little bit to get it to sit down uh, I've got a fan shroud to go on the radiator that will bolt to the existing shroud that's on here right now it basically comes it'll come out and extend so it'll it'll force the engine to, to draw more air through the through the radiator we're going to move the engine back over this way to get the get the engine centered over the radiator uh, what else what else what else we got a battery got the battery tray hooked up got all the wiring done the motor will spin over we don't have the ignition system hooked up yet there are no spark plugs in it I don't have I've got plug wires I just haven't put them in yet as you can see I haven't I haven't um, put the correct end on the coil wire just yet but um that's stuff that we're going to be handling this week didn't that tool come in it did okay um yeah I ordered a, a crimper tool for the spark plug wires but uh anyway that's where we're at I just wanted to let everyone know that was wondering no we haven't given up on the mustang project since i posted a video last week of a completely different project car that's something i've got for a future uh project for the channel uh i also have that old ltd i think that's what i'm going to do next i'm probably just going to get it nice and cleaned up and everything something easy compared to this um and then make that, her pretty yeah and then that little tractor project we'll try to get it running and then we'll jump on that uh 300 um probably this coming winter or something like that so so anyway just wanted to make sure everyone knows that we haven't given up on the mustang we're still plugging away at it we're still going to be at power tour unless something drastic happens which i don't foresee it um we're going to be there and we'll see you guys there and again thank you wolfthorn hawk ridge for pointing out the exhaust deal i mean even though it was inadvertent I really appreciate you commenting because um, without you commenting I wouldn't have given it a second thought until I was ready to run the exhaust so uh, thanks and we're going to keep this video short we're going to get back to work on the car today and the next video we'll go over some stuff and hopefully the motor will be running by then and we can go for a test drive so yeah. um, so again thanks for watching tune in next week and we'll see you then thanks